Hello, friends, and welcome to another video. Today, we're going to be trying out a full face of Japanese drugstore makeup. So a couple of weeks ago, we traveled to Japan to film a few videos. And while we were there, we wanted to explore Japanese makeup trends just a little bit. I feel like I hear a lot about J-Beauty, and we did try Daiso makeup a while back, but I wanted to try out some products that are actually used in everyday makeup routines. So our friend Rinrin, who who is a Tokyo local as well as a YouTuber and a Lolita model, helped us shop for some makeup products for our Tokyo street fashion makeover. And she also gave us some tips on what kind of makeup looks are popular in Japan overall. So we combined what we learned from her with a bit of our own research and went to a drugstore to purchase a full face of products to make our own Japan-inspired makeup look. So the drugstore we went to is called Ains and Tulpe, and it's located in the main area of the Harajuku neighborhood, pretty much right when you get off the train. From what I can tell, a lot of makeup shopping in Tokyo happens in drugstores like these, which are pretty plentiful all around the city. There are also some freestanding brand makeup stores like MAC, Shu Uemura, and Anasui, but these drugstores stock a lot of brands and products at varying price points. So it's almost like having an ultimate a type selection contained inside of a drugstore. So Ains and Tulpe has a lot of their best-selling makeup products on the main floor, but the true treasure trove is downstairs on the lower floor. Oh my god, Ty, this is a serious situation. This is where it's at where they have their full brand displays as well as tools and other miscellaneous items like foot care. It's a giant foot care display. That's what the hammer toes need. So we bought a bunch of makeup products as well as some duplicates just for backup. If you see me buying multiples, I'm just experimenting. We can't come back. No. This is the only chance I've got. And a few extra fun things that Rinrin had recommended. I'm getting this for you. It's an ear cleaner. Oh my God, thank you. And I think with that, that's hopefully everything. I'm excited. And oh yeah, we did all of this like the hour before we were supposed to leave for our flight back to LA. So good planning on our part. All right, we should actually really go to the airport probably. Yeah, we're running late. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we are now back in America. So we didn't miss our flight. Nope. And we've got our haul still in the bag from Japan. So we've got a full face of makeup's worth of products in here. So let's start off like we usually do with the eyebrows. So to start off, I've got these sort of like eyebrow trimming comb scissors. Rinrin specifically recommended these. There is like eyebrow trimming scissors and people mm. just like trim it and then just draw it in. Just Some people even like wax the tails off. Oh. That's what my mom does. Oh yeah. Oh, she yeah? lasered her eyebrows off in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Another fun thing is I've downloaded a few translation apps on my phone so we can see exactly or uh, approximately what is said on these packages. All right, so on these little scissors, Google Translate says the text is, this point scooped and cut easily. I cut it as a cush so I can do it with one hand that is easy to arrange. You know, it's um very approximate. The general idea is just saying that you can cut your eyebrows easily with one hand. I don't know, they look high stakes to me. I mean, it's it seems straightforward enough. Let's just dive right in. Oh my God, I'm like about to do this. <laughs> All right, so I think you comb up your eyebrows and then trim. Oh, I'm so nervous. I gotta start at the end. <laughs> if I cut my eyebrows off, what happens to the channel? Oh, that totally did something. Was that good or was that bad? The tail's gone. This is like a pretty uh, risky experiment. Oh, okay. Maybe I just have enough eyebrow hair that actually it's not that big of a deal. It's actually just like cutting off like almost like the first coat. Just mowing the lawn here. I wonder how these guys would deal with the sideburns. Not bad sideburn trimmer. What do they say to babe? That'll do pig. That'll do trimmers. <laughs> That'll do scissors. That was not an accent that anyone speaks in. I do think these eyebrow trimmers are pretty good, but it's hard to know like exactly what you're cutting because the comb like obscures your eyebrow. So I feel like you could really do some damage. I just feel like my eyebrows are thick enough that like I was able to sort of just cut willy nilly, but I, you can definitely tell that like some of the thickness is gone. All right, so next up is the brow powder. So this is the natural powder brow liner. Oh, that's fun. Does that really fit my brow? Yeah. It could. I also like this little mask. Is this like stencil your eyebrows almost? Oh, I guess maybe you could use it as an eyebrow stencil, but my eyebrows don't really fit. All right, so I guess I'm just gonna apply this. I think it's just sort of supposed to look natural, smoked out, imprecise in a way. Ooh, it's very dry. It does definitely feel like I'm just putting sort of powder in there. It makes like a nice ASMR sound. You wanna give us a little dose? Yeah, ready? I can't hear that at all. <laughs> 
I did get a more brown color than I usually do for my eyebrows because Rinrin Rin mentioned that like a lot of sort of natural brown colors are pretty popular in Japan. Overall, I actually kind of like this. I feel like usually I have sort of a Disney villain eyebrow going on and this is a little more of like an Emma Watson as Belle eyebrow. Strong, yet soft. What? Did you know you em see? Emma Watson, she's got like strong brows. Okay, I take it for granted. Right? Yes. Anyone? And with that, let's move on to the eyeshadow. So I've got this XL eyeshadow quad in sort of like a rosy brown neutral color story. Color story? I'm trying something. So a lot of eyeshadows in Japan, they have pearly finishes. Also a lot of neutrals, browns, like this sort of color mm. is very big. All right, so I think I'm just gonna go for a sort of like a gradient look, almost just like the darkest shade at the bottom and then just getting lighter as we go up. I like that this is sort of a pink themed palette that doesn't make you look like you have pink eye. You don't have any of that sort of infectious wash. All right, so I'm just gonna highlight under my brow bone and I think that's like pretty much the look. I don't know that I need to do that much blending because these colors aren't super pigmented. They're more just like a soft touch of shimmer and color. But I think that overall it's sort of a nice effect and I think they're pretty easy to use. So now we're gonna move on to the complexion products. And the first product we're gonna dive in with is this Visse Color Control and I got it in this pink color because usually I use like a peach color corrector under my eyes to get at that under eye baggage. It looks like a little pen and on this side, oh, it's a little puff. I think I maybe twist it perhaps. Oh, oh, did you get that? Yeah, I did. Okay, are you ready for some spot treatment? But ow, but ow. Oh, Ooh, that's cool. I'm just gonna use their end to sort of spread it around. I'm just sort of like painting my face. That doesn't seem right. My fingers are definitely the better choice as they're like blending it out more softly, but this is a pretty opaque color corrector. It's definitely like bright, but it's not half bad. So next up, we're gonna go with this Kate Stick Concealer. I couldn't really find a lot of liquid concealers around the drugstore, but thankfully we could at least find this stick concealer. Kate's coming through in the clutch. I think that this is more for spot treatment rather than like slathering around your under eyes. So I'm just gonna use this to like cover a couple of zits and then we'll move on to the foundation. So next up is one of Rin Rin's Holy Grail products that she said we should try. The Maybelline Pure BB Mineral Cushion Foundation. Foundation. Even though it's Maybelline, it is apparently not available in the US. So Japan exclusive, or I don't know that for sure, but not America exclusive. All right, so I'm gonna use the puff they've provided and I'm just gonna press in. Oh, oh wow, that's a lot. And then press on. Oh, <laughs> I need to hold on stronger. Should I just dab like a beauty blender or shall I drag? Probably dab. Oh, this smells very clean. Yeah, I can smell from here. Like a clean and clear toner. That is what it smells like, yeah. yeah. I I actually think I'm a fan of this foundation. I think the coverage is pretty decent and I can't really feel it. Like it's pretty light, which is nice. Overall, the finish is not incredibly matte, but it's not too oily or heavy feeling. I'd call it satin. My only real qualm with it is I'm just not sure how much foundation is in there, right? Cause it seems like such a small sponge and it's such a small container. I just, I don't understand. Did I already finish it? I can't tell. That would suck. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna close the chapter on our cushion foundation. That was pretty good. It all came together. And now we're gonna move on to the blush. So this is a cream blush by the brand Can Make, which Rin Rin described as a popular student brand. It's a less expensive brand and this cream cheek product is apparently very popular. There is a fair amount of Japanese text on here. So why don't we whip out our translate app once again and see what's going on. Ah, what it says is, Blood Sensation 53 Exposure. What? I mean, I can only assume that they're not really talking about like a bloodthirsty kind of blood. Oh. Oh my God, things are going well. Like it's not really like a Dracula moment. It's more of like a, the blood is rushing to my face moment. Ah. And basically I'm just gonna use my fingers and dab it on my like upper cheekbones and under eye area. Oh yeah. Oh wow, that's pink. Because that's definitely the trend right now that we noticed in Japan. Under this area, it just looks kind of like you've just done like a lot of exercising activity and was just kind of like lively. The cream blush is also supposed to provide a little bit of a dewy finish. Since dewy skin is like pretty popular in Japan. Like I saw that there was like a huge craze about glass skin in the US for a bit. That's like normal here. The thing about this is that I'm just not sure when to start 
stop. You know what I mean? She's going full ham. How ham is too ham here? Like as pink as a ham. Exactly. All right, I think let's go with this. In general, I do like the cream blush and I especially like the sheen it gives my cheekbones. It's almost like a highlighter without the shimmer. It, it, so it's like sweat. It's like you did actually just come from the gym. All right, so cream blush, a chick. Okay, so really quick, I'm just gonna dash on some of my own face powder just to, you know, get some help in here. It seems like loose setting powder is actually not that popular in Japan, but my face oil runs in rivers and streams and I'm just, I'm trying to put up some barriers. All right, so next up we've got contour and highlight. In general, I think that contouring as in like cheek chiseling isn't super popular in Japan, but nose contouring is. So this is called the Kate Designing Eyebrow 3D. And Rinrin recommended this to us to use as a nose shadow kit. So we've got sort of just like a little powder palette in here. And um, I'm not super great at nose contour, but you know, if it's part of the look. Was that right? It might need some blending, but it's on. I think I made my nose look more crooked than before. Because isn't the point of nose contouring to sort of make your nose look slender and straighter? You're asking me? I'm asking the universe. <laughs> so I'm just gonna blend this out and blend it to the point of almost away. All right, yeah, see, it's it's gone mostly. So we're gonna go with that as our nose shadow. I'm not saying that you can't use this kit for a nose contour, but I don't know if I can use this kit for a nose contour. All right, so for our highlighter, I have this XL shiny powder in silver pink, kind of to go with the whole pink theme that's been happening. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on this brush right here and we'll just slap that right on there. Oh yeah, that came in hard and fast. Yeah, like a wrecking ball. The glitter chunks are strong with this one, but it does sort of complement the shininess of the cream blush. My cheeks, they're just like a, a lighthouse granting you safe passage to the coast. They're, that's how bright they are. Also though, while we're on the step of highlighting, I'm gonna go back into our XL eyeshadow quad and and highlight my under eye area just a little bit. This is apparently a very popular like makeup look in Japan to make this little bit seem more puffy. People can go like really heavy and also even do like hyaluronic acid injections to physically poof it up. All right, in general, I feel like this effect makes me look kind of happy. Kind of like I'm like smiling and like my cheek is like going into my eye kind of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're just very enthusiastic. Like almost like dimples. So with that done, now we're gonna go in for our final pass on the eye products. And we're gonna start off with the eyeliner. So this is the Mote liner, which is like Rin Rin's like holy grail product. So I'm basically just gonna apply this to my lash line, but then at the end, instead of flicking up like a cat eye, I'm going to drag the line downwards like a not cat eye. All right, here we go. I actually really like this tip. It's kind of like a brush tip instead of a felt tip marker, which is always nice. Once I've got kind of like the whole normal lash line down, then I'll sort of drag the end down slightly, kind of like that, I guess, right? As we mentioned in our Tokyo makeover video, the droopy eye look is apparently very popular in Japan. It looks mm. like you're kinder. You know, like in anime, you'll see like the kind kinder, softer characters have this like droop to their mm. eyes and then the more stern type of characters have this pointed look. It's actually a little bit easier to do like a droopy eye look. You just kind of like and I think after a few strokes this eyeliner definitely does show up quite nicely. Is that even? Actually, I think that's pretty even, huh? I shouldn't try and fix it because that's when it always goes wrong. <laughs> All right, so I think this is my finished eyeliner. So next up, we're gonna go in with this eyelash curler, which has like a little comb attached to the top. I've never seen that before, so I thought we might as well grab it. Also, there's very little English text on here, so why don't we whip out our translator to try and see what's going on? All right, so it says, spread in fan shape with separate combs. Eyelashes will be beautiful without becoming a bunch in the gap. That's pretty coherent. This translator is getting better. Or maybe this text is just bigger, so it recognizes more of it. See, the thing about an eyelash curler is I feel like it always looks mildly like a medieval torture device. Oh yeah. With the comb, it looks even more like a deep sea fish or like a prehistoric shark. Anyway, I guess we'll put this on my face now. Oh, okay. Curling, clamping. I feel like I got some of my eyelid, but like it's too late. And... Release. What do you think, cute? I do think it looks a little curlier, but not like significantly so. All right, I'm going in for the second eye now. I'm gonna insert my lashes. Thing is, I don't think the comb is like getting all the individual ones. It's getting like a few in each slot. And then I'm gonna clamp down and then release. 
Oh, that definitely did something. All right, I might need to redo the other eye real quick to help it match, but that looks pretty nice. I feel like the eyebrow trimming scissors did a really good job of separating out the individual hairs, but I think that this guy was mostly just an eyelash curler with extra teeth for no reason. So with our eyelashes curled, we're gonna go in with a quick sweep of mascara. This is the Mote Mascara, which is also one of Rin Rin's favorites. I will say that both this and the eyeliner have very sleek metallic packaging that's like kind of sexy. Ooh, that's it smells like a marker, but it looks kind of cool. Sort of, um, angled? A little phallic? Maybe a little phallic, yes. All right, let's go in, shall we? Oh, okay. I like this mascara a lot, actually. It's not super voluminous, but I think it's nice. Oh, I just dropped that. It is making my lashes look pretty long and also pretty separated. The mascara I got was an Impact 01 Dramatic. And yeah, I guess on the top, it does say that it's a 10 in length, so whatever that means. So I may have done this out of order, but next up, I'm gonna do my colored contacts. I don't usually wear colored contacts, but they seemed like a pretty popular item in the drugstore and they were right next to the makeup. All right, I don't think it matters which eye is which. Oh, 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 they're so floppy. My contacts are like way more stiff. These are like way wetter. Oh my God. Oh, does it hurt? It definitely stings a little bit, but I can't tell if that's normal. I think it's getting better over time. And I can actually see pretty well, like right through the middle of them, but around the sides, it's almost like I've got like a vignette filter on my whole vision. Hello, Tyler. You look interesting. You look so romantic. Oh, wow. I kind of like this look, to be honest. I think close up, it looks kind of terrifying, but from far away, it looks kind of fun. I don't know if I could handle wearing these every day just because of the slight cloudiness, but I think for a special occasion, we could uh, do something fun. All right, so that's pretty much our eye look. So let's move on to our final step, the lipstick. Okay, so this is the Can Make Stay On Balm Rouge. I apologize, I already ripped off the plastic because I got excited. It almost looks like a cherry chapstick. I mean, it's called a balm rouge, so it is almost like a tinted lip balm in a way. A lot of the lipsticks are sort of, if not sheer, then sort of like a soft wash. And I think in general, the Japanese lip trend is to not overline your lips and kind of just keep it like blotted. All right, I'm almost blending this out with my finger and that's it. Ta-da! In general, this lipstick is almost more of a gloss, but I think that it feels really nice. It smells like pretty much nothing at all, and I think it looks pretty complimentary to the rest of the look. Can Make is also pretty affordable, so it's good for the price. All right, so this is my full Japanese drugstore makeup look. In general, I actually really like this look. It's definitely very different from how I usually do my makeup, and overall, I think that Japanese makeup trends are more cheap and puffy. If that doesn't sound too weird, then American makeup trends right now, like my under eyes are a little puffy. I'm sort of flushed around here. I'm sort of droopy and kind of bitten. In terms of which products I would use again, I don't think I'm gonna be reaching for the nose shadow or the highlighter. The highlighter is a little too glittery for me and the nose shadow is not quite beginner friendly enough for me, but I think that the eyeliner, mascara, and foundation I actually will use again. As for the beauty tools, they were overall pretty high stakes feeling, but I think that they were pretty solid. There were also a couple of tools that we bought that didn't make it into the video, like this ear cleaner that I got for Tyler, which I'm very excited to try. That guy looks like very disconcerted. He's like, this is really working. Yeah, that really hurts. Just because he's behind the camera doesn't mean he'll remain unscathed. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this little excursion to Japan and all of the videos that we made from it. Also, I wanted to say a giant thank you to you guys for 5 million subscribers. We did want to do something to celebrate with you guys. And as we mentioned in our, I let my subscribers pick my hair color video, we're gonna let you guys pick my first tattoo within reason. So I've created an email address specifically for this video called Sophia's new tattoo at gmail.com. And I'm gonna be fielding original tattoo submissions from you guys. So if you are into illustration or drawing or whatever, and you have an idea for what my first tattoo should be, Please submit your designs along with your name to Sophia's new tattoo at gmail.com. In terms of the placement of said tattoo, I think I'm going to reserve that decision for me, just so I don't end up with a tattoo across my forehead that says Bodie McBoatface. If you liked this video, make sure to smash that like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to smash that subscribe button. A big shout out to Devika for watching. Thanks for watching Devika, and I will see you guys a next time.